The synth world is full of interesting devices, which is why so many of us love spending all our money on different synths. They range from keyboard synths, groove boxes, tabletop synths, software synths, and so on. But one of the most complex, customizable, and interesting synth types is the modular synth. Modular synths are amazing for anyone who wants to customize their own synth really shape their own sound and build their own unique instruments. But there are some big hurdles for the run-of-the-mill synth enthusiast to overcome. They are expensive, confusing, and can be quite intimidating at first. And knowing exactly where to plug in all the patch cables can seem like an impossible task in the beginning. So today I want to show you a very cool little modular synth system that is designed to teach beginners, and especially younger ones, about all the basics of how modular synths work. This is the Korg Little Bits Kit. So what is the Korg Little Bits Synth Kit? Well, it's an extremely simplified modular synth. So the purpose of it is to teach young ones about how to shape sounds and basic functions of a synth. And the principles are basically the same as with a real modular synth, except you don't have to patch things via patch cables because everything gets patched automatically using the magnetic connectors. Okay, so here's the box, and inside you will find this little booklet that will have a ton of different patches and different suggestions on how you can use it, and a little bit of the history of synths, and little educational information for the user. Under that you have two trays of modules and the 9-volt battery is included. And the first little synth it suggests you build is just so that you can hear the oscillator by itself. So that's easy, you just have the power module here connected to the battery. You click it into the oscillator, then you click this little speaker module into the oscillator. And now when you turn it on, you can put the microphone right in front of it, and then you can hear better what it sounds like. So now it's on a saw waveform. You have the pitch right here. You can fine tune with this little knob. You can also change the waveform to a square. In addition to that, you can, instead of using this little inbuilt speaker it has also a mini jack input right here, so you can connect it to a recorder. Next, we can attach the keyboard. Now, the keyboard is going to affect the oscillator, so we need the keyboard to send a signal to the oscillator, so it has to be before the oscillator in the chain. So let's put these together. Obviously, power always has to be first. And then we add the speaker. Okay, so the keyboard has two modes. It has either press, which gates it, so it's a binary on off kind of situation, or it has hold, which will just play a continuously note. Now the pitches are relative and you can fine-tune the pitch using the oscillator module. Next, let's try out the sequencer. Now, this is a staple in all synths and especially in modular synths where there's a big tradition of the sequencer doing most of the work and having several sequencers together that can modulate each other and create polyrhythms and things like that. So now they're all turned down. You can see how the light is moving. And the reason why I don't hear anything is because the frequency is too low pickup. So if we dial them up, now we can hear the first one. And then you can kind of fine tune how you want your sequence to be. Of course, you can change the speed. And 
Then you can also change the pitch of your entire sequence using the oscillator. So far we've had a very raw, dry sound with very aggressive attacks. But what if we want to shape our tones more? Well, then we can use an envelope. This envelope only has attack and decay, so it does not have any sustain or release, although decay is in this setting kind of the same as release. So in a real modular synth, you would usually use an envelope together with an amp. And an amp defines the volume of the signal and the envelope will define the curve or the shape and speed of the volume. But in this little bits kit, you don't have an amp because the amp is built into the envelope as well. So that kind of makes it simpler. So we're going to use the keyboard and it's going to be in hold mode. And if you remember from earlier, we put the keyboard right after the power source. And then we put the oscillator after the keyboard. And then we put the envelope after the oscillator. If we turn the attack way up. Can get a more drawn out note. If we pull out the decay as well, we long note that fades in and fades out. So now they're turned all the way up, both of them, a long swell and a long tail. And if we turn both all the way down, we get a plucky sound instead. So now when there's no decay, you just hear a click, but then you kind of dial in and get whatever shape you want. Like you've heard, everything is very, again, very raw, but if we use a filter, we can get rid of those high frequencies and we can kind of round off the notes and get a more pleasant sound. So let's find the filter. And just put it after the oscillator. And you can hear now it's completely off. And then you have the cutoff frequency here. So start dialing it in. We get rid of the more intense, higher frequencies. And this is the peak or also resolution. So it's that way you can shape, shape your sounds a little bit better. Okay, so that was some of the basics. And now let me show you how you can put everything together and kind of create a functioning synth. So you have two of my favorite uh, patches here. One they call synth band, which in a sense create, lets you create two synths working together. Let me just set it up real quick. Okay, so we have a splitter going from the power and we can split into two separate power sources. And then we have a mixer right here, which takes the two different signals and mixes it into one audio signal. And then finally, the mixer goes into the sound output. Okay, so what have we got here? We have one sequencer here modulating the oscillator, going to a filter, going to the output, and then we have the keyboard go into an oscillator that we can so we can play this oscillator using the keyboard it goes to an envelope and it goes to a delay effect so let's see how this works okay so now we have the sequencer running here we can modulate the filter to make it more or less audible if we turn that down we can turn up the keyboard so now you can hear it's just dry, and then we can add in the delay. Now tune this oscillator so that this sequencer is playing a C major chord. So you can hear what that sounds like. There you 
have a little synth band, I guess. And the next one is just called Synthesizer with the Works, which creates a synthesizer that has a richer, fuller sound, and that actually sounds like a real synthesizer. So this one has the keyboard first, and then it has the keyboard going into two oscillators instead of just one. So this is very much like building Legos. And then you have the mixer going into both of the oscillators. And then you have the filter going into the delay and delay going into the output. Okay, so let's see what that sounds like. Press, we get Now the reason why that sounded terrible was because I forgot to put the envelope in. So I got keyboard, two oscillators, mix, envelope, filter, delay, and output. So now we just have to tune them so that they sound pretty equal. There, and now they're a little detuned as well. And then we can start dialing in the different settings so got the envelope there you can make it a little smoother with a filter and we can add some delay And obviously you can change out the modules, you can use the sequencer instead of the keyboard. You can basically rearrange these modules however you want. So all in all, this is a very fun way to learn about synthesis. And like I mentioned, this is intended primarily for younger ones. And as you can tell, you're not going to get a Moog sound out of this. But yeah, it's a very fun way of exploring synthesis and to understand how things work, how the various components work, like how, like how the envelope, how the oscillator, how the delay, how the filter and how everything works. And... It's honestly a really good gateway into real modular synthesis because it does make you understand it easier and it makes you understand in what part of the chain each different module is supposed to be in order to produce sound. So is this a replacement for a modular synth? Absolutely not, but it is a cool starting point. It's not that expensive and it can be way less frustrating, especially for younger ones. And this booklet with the little patches that you can play along with too is a really fun and nice way of learning how to use this little synthesizer.